now we're continuing on part motherfucking two on this uh, fucking heavy metal and horror bullshit. The first one I did I talked about the uh, early shit, early music that kind of started integrating the uh, horror aesthetic. But this one we're going to kind of talk about the early cinema that kind of started mixing the occult and horror. I mean, horror, horror has been around for fucking centuries. I mean, everything from people scared of the fucking devil to literature, whatever. But as far as cinema, it had a huge impact on uh, music. So going even back to uh, 1922, Hoxton, you've ever seen that movie. It's images and clips that have been used numerous times in black metal and all kinds of shit. But that scene where they show hell, that's some iconic shit, man. That, it's fucking great. Just atmospheric and all the shit that's going on. I know you've seen it. If you haven't, Hoxton, 1922, go look at that shit. It's just the visuals are fucking great on there. Great stuff. But, I mean, there's also other stuff. 1922, Nosferatu. I'm sure you know that. Uh, Max Shrek, that classic shit. It's very uh, iconic, too. Just the uh, visuals on there. The German expressionism, expressionist look, uh, high contrast, uh, uh, whites and blacks. Excellent stuff. Then in 1931, there was another movie called uh, Vampire. It ends with a R, V, A, M, P, Y, R. Which was kind of cool. For me, I, I'm not a big fan of that movie. It was kind of boring, I thought. But Hoxton and Nosferatu, yes. Very atmos atmospheric. And ironically, I hear that uh, Nosferatu is being remade by the uh, director, director who did The Witch a few years back. Which is a great atmospheric fucking movie. So, I'm normally I don't get excited about uh, remakes. But this one, I'm really curious to check it out. Because if, just because who, the director, I... I fucking can't remember his goddamn name, but the director who's doing this, I'm very curious to see what he's going to do, because with The Witch, it captured that great fucking aesthetic, so I think he should do a good job on the uh, Nosferatu, so we shall see. Uh, there's been other movies too, even 1920, The Golem, The Stone Statue, but actually, I guess that really, uh, that's not really true. It, it's, it deals with uh, fantasy shit, not so much witchcraft, but that's cool, but also, you know, you got Dracula and Bela Lugosi, with White Zombie, talking about uh, uh, witchcraft and shit like that. I'm sure if you look at, I'm sure when that came out, that was pretty fucking scary for back then. I mean, you watch it now, it's not fucking scary, but pretty cool. And then even uh, after that, 1934, The Black Cat, uh, Bela Lugosi and uh, Boris Karloff, there's a fucking a satanic, like, cult like uh, overall theme to it. And then uh, Boris Karloff, his character is basically like Aleister Crowley. It's based on that character. Is it a, a cult? There's some uh, rituals on there, which I'm sure were very uh, controversial back then. And then the, uh, at the end, when Bela Lugosi starts cutting up uh, Bell, uh, Boris Karloff, I know they said they had to cut scenes because it was too uh, tragic for shocking for people back then, which for a 1933 movie, it, somebody getting fucking drawn and quartered, that's pretty fucking crazy. Uh, other movies, too, like uh, Charles Lawton's um, Night of the Hunter, 1955, Robert Mitchum. Fucking great movie. Got some uh, uh, folk horror type shits. Uh, I think that was influential, but also especially the fucking Hammer horror movies. Hammer with uh, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, all those Draculas, and Fra Frankenstein, all that shit. Gothic, just the overall gothic feel, especially for black metal, adding that gothic look. That, especially. And then the Amicus, which was like uh, Hammer, but a little lesser, but still they, they had Peter Cushing and uh, uh, Chris Lee played a bunch of their movies too. A lot of the uh, anthology type things. I think the original uh, Tales from the Crypt, 1972, I think, it was based on the old comic. Not before the fucking HBO Crypt Keeper. Ah! Bullshit, this is before that. Very good stuff, which uh, actually some of those little sections on the original they remade to put in the uh, HBO series that came out. And now, with the movie Black Sabbath, 1963, Mario Bava, that, uh, obviously, Black Sabbath got their name from that. It's a great uh, anthology film. It's got uh, Boris Karloff and whatnot, and it's also got that infamous deformed-looking creature thing, that zombie that was uh, used on deceased Luck of the Corpse cover. That's picture of that fucked up looking zombie. That's from uh, Black Sabbath. 
And uh, Mario Bava also did uh, uh, Black Sunday, which is also great gothic, high contrast, black and white looking uh, gothic shit. So if you've seen that motherfucker, very good. Black Sunday! And going back to uh, talking about horror, I mean, not horror, no shit fucking horror. I mean, hammer horror. Christopher Lee, they did all the uh, Dracula movies. One that I really like a lot. I mean, I, I like them all, but Taste the Blood of Dracula really has a strong occult, uh, a strong occult, God damn, I can't fucking think, a strong occult theme to it in the uh, plot. It's very occult driven where these, uh, well, the businessmen are looking for uh, some some uh, something more interesting in life. So they go to a fucking whorehouse and they start talking to this fucking creep who's played by Ralph Bates, who plays it fucking great. He was also in uh, Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. And ironically, he, he was supposed to be play Dracula in this uh, particular movie. But they ended up talking Christopher Lee into actually getting back onto it, which was a wise choice. I think Ralph Bates played this fucking little asshole better where he takes him... And uh, shows them where they had the ashes of Dracula before, which this actually, this movie starts off from the ending from the previous film, Dracula's Risen from His Grave, where he gets killed, and then this other guy sneaks up and gets his little blood ashes, and then they bring Dracula back to life from a fucking seance. Great shit. Great fucking movie. And then moving on to the uh, 60s, Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, that... In modern, well, kind of modern times, it's really would continue the uh, start of the satanic panic where people were truly scared of fucking satanic seances and all this shit. But uh, Rosemary's Baby was uh, more psychological because as far as the actual on-screen stuff of showing uh, occult and satanic shit, it's, it's not as much, it's more suggestive than anything. But then, of course, we know, we moved on, 1973, the fucking uh, Exorcist, that just opened up the floodgates of people freaking out about this goddamn shit, scared of Satanism and think the devil was going to come in there not in the night and eat your pussy or some shit like that. People were fucking scared. And for me, The Exorcist, is still, it still holds up pretty fucking well. It had a uh, scarring impact on me because I, I didn't see it in 1973. I wasn't born. I was born in 74. But probably i know i had to have been five or six i saw that shit and it fucked me up i mean it, it's still i mean i like it but it, it at the time it scared the shit out of me and then they had the part two the her heretic that's fucking weird fucking garbage right there but the first one great shit and then 1976 the omen more atmospheric crap and also two 1974 the same year the exorcist or the year after the exorcist came out beyond the door has anybody seen that fucking movie? If you dare, who are you? <laughs> Jessica has gone beyond the door. At first, she didn't believe, but she does now. <laughs> beyond the door. Because I know for me, I saw it as a kid, and it scared me. And, and for whatever reason, to me, the most iconic part of that movie is that woman's uh, pregnant, and their baby's the devil or some shit like that. And she's walking around and picks up a fucking rotten-ass banana peel and starts eating it. I remember watching that as a kid. It made me fucking sick. <laughs> stuck in my head and, and I saw it that one time as a kid and kind of forgot about it but then here recently on I think it was on Shudder it was on there I was like, oh fuck I have not watched this movie since when I was a kid so I rewatched it it doesn't hold up it, it yeah it, it's worth watching once uh, but not nothing uh, nothing worth not as uh, iconic as I remember it's got Richard Johnson on there who's been on a bunch of other fucking horror movies and shit but yeah, and, and plus I heard that they made a lot of money, but then of course they got sued by uh, Warner Brothers. Who the fuck made the uh, Exorcist? 
And with anything, when something's popular in uh, Hollywood, people keep ripping it off just like with that. And then also Abby, 1974 too, was a uh, black black exploitation type movie ripoff of The Exorcist, which is hilarious, who has uh, William Marshall, Blackula himself, and also from Pee Wee's Playhouse as well. He was on there, but Blackula himself doing exorcisms on here on Abby. Which uh, I fucking love those black exploitation movies, man. Blackula, Scream, Blackula, Scream, whatever the fuck it was. All those great movies. I like that cheap shit. Abby, fucking hilarious. Probably not. It probably wasn't meant to be hilarious, but it is. And they got fucking sued. Um, moving on, 1978, uh, The Manitou. Actually, I brought this up in the uh, interview I did with uh, Vincent Crowley. We were talking about horror movies, and he remembers this too. The fucking Manitou, 1978. That woman has a little fucking Indian demon growing out of her neck, and it comes out. It's a midget fucking Indian possessing people and doing some black magic. It's Tony Curtis, Burgess Meredith is on there. Had a good cast. In that movie too, I was scared as fuck when I saw that as a kid. Watch it now... Not so much. I mean, I, I, it's one of those movies I still watch probably once a year or something. Just, it's kind of shitty, but it's funny. A little fucking demon Indian. But it doesn't hold. It's not scary. But for me, if I watch that movie as a brand new movie for the first time now, I probably think it was fucking garbage. But I just like to watch it because there's bad movies I like to watch from when I was a kid. That, uh, you know, they, they, you just watch it for... Uh, Nostalgic reason. Um, also, uh, uh, The Devil's Reign, Ernest Borgnine, John Travolta, Rick William Shatter, which I actually was going to do a whole video on that probably because I fucking love that movie. and it, I think I'm just going to wait and talk about that on a separate movie, a separate video for the whole movie. The Devil's Reign. Fucking great. Um, also, 1975, Race with the Devil. They, Peter Fonda, Ward Oates. They try to add a little fucking action type shit mixed up with uh, the occult. Pretty fucking cool, man. It's just basically about those two in a fucking uh, RV and they're out camping and then they see uh, a ritual a seance going on. See uh, Warren Oates looking through binoculars laughing. They're getting naked. He's all a bunch of fucking hippies out there. And they're all laughing. But then they see a fucking somebody got sacrificed. The whole fucking town of fucking cult people are after them, and it turns into a road race action. Pretty cool fucking shit. I love that movie. Race with the Devil. Uh, Psychomania 2 is another fucking movie. If you've seen that, that fucking uh, biker gang kills themselves and become one with the devil. Then that badass scene where there's just a frog just floating in the air. Anybody seen that shit? But, uh, that's kind of uh, that whole little era of the 60s and 70s kind of started building the momentum for when the 80s hit and then bands and music started really embracing this horror and the occult, the satanic. That's when all fucking hell broke, broke loose. Everybody was scared of Satan and all this shit. But that's part motherfucking three coming up. Goddamn son of a fucking bitch. Anyway, fuck off. Go hell Satan. Go do a goddamn seance in your fucking grandma's bedroom.